right, all right. Then. Some things about the manifest. If you can hear me, somebody give me some hey, I can hear you or something. I think y'all can hear me. But I'm definitely excited about tonight, y'all. About show me the town. It's about to go down talking about service, the discipline of service. And just to give y'all a recap real quickly, God has been doing some awesome things. I'm in Bible study. Uh, we've been talking about a whole lot um, in the month of July, the summer months. So just to give you a quick backdrop, what we all been talking about. Talked about the discipline of prayer, the discipline of fasting, the discipline of worship, the discipline of solitude, the discipline of study, and the discipline of service. So man, it's been awesome. Um, and we're getting ready to go to our next to last teaching tonight, talking about the discipline of service. So I pray uh, that you prepare your hearts and your minds to receive. So I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes to come home. Yes, yes, yes. In the spirit, in the somebody in Bible study tonight. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
Come on, can you put your hands together for your future? Can you put your hands together for your destiny and the calling that's on your life? Y'all, let's secure the bag. Y'all, let's go ahead and secure the bag. Let's go ahead and open up uh, with a word of prayer. And uh, Dear Lord, we tell you thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We tell you thank you, God, for your faithfulness and being so good to us. God, we just thank God for the opportunity, Lord, to grow in you. And that, Lord, has been growing in you. Lord, we're also growing in your word. So we pray, Lord, that your word, Lord, the teaching, God, falls on good ground. God, we want this word, this teaching, God, to deposit our souls, our minds, and our spirits and get into our hearts. God, we just want to be better servants, God, Lord, for you have called us, God, God, to be the men and women of God, Lord, to be a servant to one another, God, Lord, to serve the community, God, to serve our families, to serve our marriages and our children, God. We just thank you, God, for this next level of elevation, Lord, that you're ushering us to. So, God, pray, Lord, right now, Lord, to begin, God, to open up our ears to hear your word, open up our eyes to see in the spiritual realm. And Lord, open up our minds, God, to comprehend and receive everything that you're communicating to us in this time. And we tell you thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Bible study. Um, if you would like to uh, be on the screen, the only thing you have to do is be on the screen and unmute your phone, and I can add you all to the, to the stream and everything like that. Uh, we would love to have you. Uh, someone says that I can't use my microphone. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. Uh, but continue to work out those technical difficulties. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get uh, into this thing tonight. I uh, pray that something um, has something to say tonight that will change our lives forever. Okay. All right. So we're talking about service tonight and our foundational scripture. It's going to come from John 13, 15 through 16, where the Lord declares, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. All right. Uh, I think, Mr. Marlin, if you don't mind muting your phone real quick, if you don't mind, man of God, I appreciate that. John 13. No, you are you good. <laughs> 15 through 16. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verily, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. All right, so today uh, we're talking about service. All right, and let's go ahead and go back to the top. Let's get a good sound definition of what is service, all right? So we look at service. All right, service is the action of helping or doing work for someone. All right, I want to pause I want that to really marinate in your spirit. Talking about service, what 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 is what is service? The action of helping or doing work for someone. All right, I'm about to go in and preach. You know, pop off and preach it already. Okay, so we talk about the action. See, the the issue that we have in the church and community in our personal lives, our relationships, on our jobs, what have you, is that we don't want to serve nobody anymore. All right, excuse my double negative. All right. But once again, when we look at this definition, it is the action. And the truth of the matter is, the reality is, we do a whole lot of talking, but it, it ain't no action going on, all right? And that's why y'all know, for those who know me personally, all right, I am a man of execution, all right? If you can do all this talking, I'm getting ready to write a book, I'm getting ready to start a business, I'm getting ready to take these classes, but if you don't act on it, then you're still going to be in the same place as you were year after year after year after year. So it is not until all right, we put in action, and it's the same thing with service. All right, We can have a heart to, to be a blessing to the community. We can have a heart to serve others, the homeless, and feed those all right, who don't have food, those who are hungry. We can have a heart to do a lot of things for the kingdom of God. But it's really pointless if we don't put any action behind it. All right, so I'm kind of glad, all right, this, this message, this teaching is going to hit home for everybody tonight because it's, it's time out for the talking. All right, we do all this talking. I want to do this. I want to do that. I see this need 
in, in these young ladies. I see this need in the men or whatever, whatever, whatever arena that God has placed you. But it's not until we perform the action. All right. So service, the action of helping or doing work with someone. And to the matter is we as the church, sometimes we can be lazy. We can be content. All right. We can be slowful. We can we like to procrastinate. Some 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 of us. We don't like to plan. All right. But in order to have effective service, people got, we have to be able to put in the work by all means necessary in order for for people outside of the church to see Jesus, to see God, to see uh, the light uh, shining on us. We have to go out there and put in the work for who? For someone else. All right. In other words, all right, we are able to provide assistance. All right. So I want you to begin to process even right now. Where is God calling you to serve? Well, who who is God calling you to be a service to? Now, me, I understand my lane. God has given me the ability to play basketball, to play professional basketball overseas. All right, I play collegiately at UTC. All right, I play at Haywood High School. All right, I'm a coach. I'm a high school coach. Hello, Pastor Ricky. <laughs> that's your calling. That's that's my arena to serve. All right, basketball players to be in that arena. Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful <laughs> to be the Pastor Arena praise. Please don't get it twisted. But I know that my service is to the community at large concerning the athletic realm. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have training. I'm going to have AAU teams where I can um, teach Bible study and pour nuggets of wisdom into our youth. That's what God has called me to. He has called me to serve our athletes on the basketball court. All right, and people have given us all kind of accolades and stuff like that. Oh, this is awesome ministry. Because we understand that we're, that's where we're supposed to be. All right. So once again, I want you to begin processing who has God called you to serve. And once again, it doesn't have to be a thousand people. It can be the little boy across the street. It can be the, the mother, all right, who husband is deceased now. All right. She's a widow. Maybe God has called you to serve and minister to her. It could be your children. All right. Who has God called you to serve? All right. So uh, when we look in our notes, all right, I want you to write this down in your notes, all right? Serving is important, all right? I don't care what anyone says, all right? I don't care where you go. Serving is very critical, all right? It's very critical because there are people, all right, who are looking for people to have a servant's heart, all right? That's why, you know, you are, you are drawn more to people who are servants like dang? For some reason, I just like hanging around such and such. I like hanging around Mr. Sweet Potato. I like hanging around Mr. Macaroni and Cheese because they have a servant's heart. All right, they are exemplifying. Watch this: the example of Jesus. So let's go ahead and read our scripture. Let's do Bible study. All right, Jesus. Watch this. He is. All right, Jesus. He is talking to the disciples. He's making to the disciples, people, of God, that after he has washed their feet, after he has labored before them. All right. Jesus said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. All right. So essentially, Jesus is saying, look, this is the standard. All right. Just because. All right. These are my uh, uh, these are my apprentices. Just because just because these are my disciples doesn't mean that I cannot serve them. So, for example, when you think of a corporate a corporation. All right. The CEO training the employees. All right. Sometimes the CEO may go be the one to go pick up cupcakes and donuts and bring them to the employees instead of the employees bringing it to him all the time. OK, you know what? Let me be of service to you. How can I make you feel better? How can I make you feel special? And that is the same thing, the same mentality, same disposition, the same model that we are modeling after Jesus. He sets the examples by washing all right, his disciples, his apprentices' feet. All right, now, he didn't have to do that. But once again, all right, this was a, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. This is a form of humility. All right, and this is the point that we have to gravitate to as believers. All right, it's not all the way, it's not all about us all the time. But it's about assisting, aiding, and serving somebody else. All right, because he said, very truly, I tell you, 
No servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. All right. So serving is important. All right. Serve is important because serving is ministry. All right. And ministry means to serve. All right. That is why we're here. That is why the church exists. We are here to serve. We are here to meet spiritual needs. We are here to meet natural needs. We are here to pour into other people. All right. So when we serve, we are essentially doing ministry. All right. So if you ever wonder why, why do I really go to church? All right. Not only to praise and worship God. All right. But because of the model that Jesus has laid out for us and mapped out for us. All right. In John 13, John, the 13th chapter. All right. We are here to be servants as well. OK. All right. Why do we serve people, God? All right. Serving makes God happy. All right. So serving God. Hello. My bad. <laughs> we serve God by serving people. All right. So in order to make God happy. All right. We serve him. We honor him. We acknowledge him by serving people. The people around you, the people in your community, the people as God has um, allowed to be in your care. All right. So that is why we serve. OK. All right. So that's why we serve. So let's go back up here. All right. Look at some lesson notes. All right. So we're most like Jesus when we serve just as a son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. All right. I really love this scripture. Jesus did not come to be served. All right, but he came to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So when you when we go back to the cross, all right, everything points back to the cross. All right, y'all, think about it. Jesus, the son of God, the son of man, has all power, has all authority in his hands. Now, let's not get it twisted. Jesus didn't really have to bear the cross if he didn't want to. All right, let's 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 be real tonight. Jesus, you know, when they hung him on the cross, he could have stepped down if he really wanted to. Jesus, as they're piercing him, all right, putting the crown of thorns around his head, piercing him in his side, all right, putting the nails and stuff all in his feet. He didn't really have to take that if he didn't want to. But guess what? Jesus said, you know what? It's not a be it's not about me right now. Watch this. It's about somebody else. So, so, so he he took the beating. He took the the bruises. He he took the slaps. He took them ridiculing him and mocking him, spitting on him. All right, talking about him like you know he was a nobody. But guess what, y'all? He did that just for us. And the reason why he did that is because he had to show us what it really meant to be a servant. That's why, child of God, you ought to be giving God glory right now because he did it just for you. Jesus, watch this. When it comes to serving, you cannot be selfish when it comes to serving. All right, we'll write that down. Some of y'all might be writing that. You can't. Serving, all right, it is selflessness. All right, let's, I've got to put it down for some notes. All right. Serving is selflessness. All right, it's a word I learned in basketball. So when we serve, all right, we are getting self out the way. We are neglecting self, how we feel. We are getting our time schedule out the way, and the Lord has to deliver me for that. All right, and we have to become selfless. All right, so whenever, all right, we are asked to serve in some form of capacity, all right, we have to take on the cognitive ability, the cognitive thinking that it's not about me. It's, it's not about us, but it's about being a blessing to somebody else. All right, so that is where we have to get to. All right, so serving uh, is selflessness. All right. Also, I'm talking about this in a little bit. Serving requires sacrifice. All right. Look, sometimes it's just you know, hey, you know, I'm, my schedule and I got this going on, got that going on. But when you really have a servant's heart. Hello, somebody. All right. It's going to require a sacrifice. All right. So my question for you on, on, on tonight, where are all the areas where you've been sacrificing? 
all right, for someone else. All right, you once again, we got to hit home, y'all. We got to really get to the root of it. Where are all the areas where you um, been sacrificed? And I'm looking at the comments. Let me pray at the end of the for my friend, her brother in law. I got you, I got you, Miss April. Thank you so much. All right, God bless you, Miss Linda, for the amen. I see you. Thank you, Miss Nee Evans, for the amen. It's good to see Miss Christina on here. All right, good to see Miss Kiki on here. Good to see Lita, Sarah. God bless y'all tonight. All right. Um, let me get back to my screen <laughs> so I can teach. Uh, there we go. All right. So talking about server. All right. Next. So we're more like Jesus. Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. All right. John 13, 15, and 16 in the right context, right after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet, we just got done talking about it. Jesus asking them to serve because the others need it or because the disciples need it. All right, this is what I really want to talk about tonight. All right. Once again, oh, y'all really, y'all really get this. The question is, is Jesus asking the disciples to serve the other people because they need it? Or is Jesus asking the disciples, all right, to, to wash feet because they need it? And y'all, truth of the matter is not only do people are in need and all that good stuff, but when it comes to serving, most of the time, from my personal experience, it's really for us <laughs> that not only are we going to be a blessing to them, watch this, but also God is going to do a work in us. That, 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 that's what it's all about. God doing a work inside of us. All right. God is trying to watch this humble us. God is trying to put us in a sense of humility. All right. That is not all about it. And most of the time, all right, it, it's, it's a reflection. All right. That, that we're blessed. And that's why I'm so glad I had the opportunity to travel to Costa Rica to go on a mission trip. I encourage everybody to go on a mission trip because it's like, we, we, I mean, we were building houses and putting up dirt and we did some everything when I went on that mission trip and it really opened up my eyes and, and it's, it's, it was in those moments where God began to work on me. Ricky, do you know how blessed you are? This is what I've been looking for, a servant's heart. And I want to put on the screen real quickly, all right? The arena praise, watch this. We've served, y'all. Look at us. I was a part of our little church. Look, Orchard Now Elementary, back to school bash. All right, we've done the work. Watch this. I got another one for you. Look, we're there serving the college students, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, my alma mater, UTC. Kiki over here. Give me some hearts or something, Kiki. Whoever else went to you, who else went to UTC over here? All right, look, we there. We serving the people. Got food for them. I think we got some pizza for them. Uh, whoever came to Bible study, guess what? Mr. Marlin, we got you right here. Miss Linda, thank God, Miss Kim. Who that? A Jay? I forgot who that is. Uh, the men who were. Look, we, we been in the community. This is what God is looking for. <laughs> All right, I got the last one. All right, look. The senior pastor. I'm not too good to carry no boxes. We partnered with Orchard Knot Middle School. I guess this was like right after the pandemic or whatever or something. And y'all, we fed over 300 people, 300 families. That's serving. And guess what? That was on, a, I think, a Friday morning. Y'all think I felt like going down there to Orchard Knot and, 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 but guess what? I had, it's called, I had to sacrifice and it humbled me. All right. So, uh, watch this. I'm about, I'm about to make this. I'm about to bring this all together. Watch this. So when we go back to the scripture, Jesus said, Verily, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than them. So in other words, just because Pastor Rick is the same pastor don't mean I'm too good enough to serve. I ain't, uh -uh, no. If the member's going to um, clean up, I'm going. If the member's going to go feed the homeless or whatever, or feed the hungry, I'm going too. Look, you never become exempt from serving. You never become exempt from serving. We are designed to be servants for the rest of our lives. All right? That, that, is, that is the mentality. All right? So shout out to AOP. 
all right, for making the vision come to fruition and doing what the Lord has called us to do. And yeah, we're going to invade several school too. So get ready. All right, y'all get ready. <laughs> all right, so let me get back to my notes. All right, so we're called to be servants. Serving isn't just for the other person, it's also for you. All right, so once again, God is doing something in us, He's doing something in you. The cross isn't just a sign of surrender, but of service. It catalyzed the point of transformation. He went in with the human body and came out with the glorified body. Service transforms us the way the tomb did. All right. So even when it comes to serving others, it's easy to know the word and study, but it's another to apply it into your life. So once again, this is why we're here. All right. Look, I've, I've been bad. I've been a bad teacher. What are, you, what are you talking about? All right. Because my first three years of ministry all right, for Bible studies, doing a lot of teaching, good stuff, good stuff, but we didn't really give any application. Okay. How do you take this, this information from the Bible and apply it to your life? So we are here tonight all right, in Bible study to take the model of Jesus to apply it to our individual lives. So not only are we going to be servants for our local church assembly, but we're also going to, be, going to become servants in our households. Honey, wife, husband, how can I be of service to you? Children, how can I serve you? When you go, whatever, wherever you go, all right, if it's in a grocery store, can you be a servant to the to the elderly and help them carry out their bags? Application. All right, when you see a children, a child uh, struggling in school academically, and you know you have um, the, the, the right resources to help them, be a servant. All right, so once again, I want you to see yourself out in the field, out in the field working, being a laborer. Because a lot of people, all right, are called, but few are chosen. All right, so you got to see yourself out there serving and transforming lives. All right, now a big one right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enlarge the screen. <laughs> Serve consistently, even if not weekly. All right. So once again, we're not asking you to just take your whole life and you know put it to the side because you know we all have lives. It's, it's the reality of it. We all have lives. However, all right, we as a church body, church family, all right, because we got family and friends, you know, everybody watching, may come back and watch this. All right, we're supposed to serve consistently. All right, so what we're doing, all right, as, as, a, as a church ministry, right, for the for every month now, we are getting together and we're serving one another. All right, we started off last month, so shout out to the women, Miss Linda, Letha, all y'all for getting us together. All right, Miss Linda, Look, I love my mama. Well, I'm not saying that because she's like my mother, but she's our church mother. And I believe in honoring you know, my mother. But y'all, the woman of God, she out there on the grill. Hot grill is hot as a firecracker out there. <laughs> she walks into the house and just fell out. All right. Falling out. <laughs> Because she's a servant, all right? She's trying to get the job done. She know we hungry in there. Know we starving and stomach growling and making weird noises. But shout out to the women, all right, for sacrificing even her own life, all right, to be a servant. So y'all clap it up for Miss Linda if you can. All right, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. God bless you, Mr. Barlow. So once again, all right, here it is. All right, I, I, I gave this principle when we first started AOP. All right, we have to adopt the mentality, three words, whatever it takes. All right, when we can hone in on those three words, all right, y'all guess what? We are getting ready to go to another level. So I want y'all to put that in all caps. What is serving for me? Whatever it takes, y'all. That's how oh my bills and stuff showing. We have to get to this point. All right, that I'm gonna do whatever it takes. If it costs me my time, if it costs me, all right, to turn down some things, some engagements, some assignments, I'm going to do whatever it takes. All right, here it is. All right, this is what service does. Number six. All right. Service needs to be a regular part of the believer's regimen. All right? And as you get done with that, all right, that's about the consistency, number seven. Um, service 
of forms character. All right, it's called character, character formation. All right, so essentially, all right, when we serve people, God, God is shaping and forming our character. All right, it's, it's called cultivation. All right, hence growth. Whenever you continue to water a thing and plant a thing and continue to water it, it starts to cultivate. And that's why we have Bible study every Wednesday. All right, so we can form character to, to, for God to shape us into the best version of ourselves. All right, so that, that is what service does. So service forms character. All right, and I don't know about you, but my prayer tonight is, Lord, I need you to work on me. All right, Lord, I, I need you to prepare me to be a servant like I've never been before so that we can have a better community, all right? All right, so number eight. So uh, let me go about, so we're talking about sacrifice. All right, so service will require you to sacrifice your time, talents, treasures, all right, energy, and even your life, all right, write that down, service, or let me put serving, my bad, y'all, <laughs> serving will require, all right, <laughs> so don't be surprised when the pastor asks you, hey, you know, can you meet us downtown and pass out water and clothing? And don't be surprised because I'm we, we're telling y'all right now that it will require. So don't be surprised. Don't be, oh, I, oh, I didn't know it was. It's going to require a sacrifice of what your time. All right, and y'all know me. Oh, Lord, pray y'all still. The Lord still working on me. I value time. All right. If you want to upset me. Make me mad, frustrated. If you want to get on my bad side, don't waste my time. All right. However, because the Lord is still working on me in my mind and my time, all right, we have to have a sense of humility. All right. Now, Pastor Ricky, even now, I got to say it's not about me this weekend. It's not about me making money this weekend, my training. Hence, all right, if y'all, you know, people who come, you know, bring their child to training. I've taken off on Sundays and Wednesdays now because Sundays I really want to have church and then focus on the members and fellowship, go out to eat, go to somebody's house and really have that connection. And y'all know me when I first was a young minister elder, as soon as church was over, guess what? I'm heading straight to the gym. <laughs> one on ones, four or five hours a day. I did not care. But now I right, that the Lord is working on me. All right, and you know, Lord's been blessing and all that stuff. I can now focus on the people like Wednesdays, no basketball whatsoever. All right, why? Because I want to be a servant on Wednesdays. I want y'all to know hey, Pastor Ricky, he did prepare for Bible study because that, that, that's what a shepherd does, he serves the sheep. <laughs> all right, so once again, all right, Jesus, he, he has given us this model. All right. And what's this? John, John 13. All right. But once again, it's going to require a sacrifice. And if y'all don't get nothing, nothing out of this, all right, I need you to get that. That serving will require you to sacrifice time, talents, all right, your gifts, your calling. It requires you to sacrifice those things. All right. That um, it, it like, for example, we got some people who are good in administration. In the, in the real world, all right? I know we got a younger daughter here, Kiki, all right? I'm about to put Kiki to work. We need some administrative work done for the church. And guess what? That's her talent. Kiki, can you, you know, prepare the tithe and offer stuff? Can you <laughs> send out the Z? Uh, so I'm <laughs> just letting y'all know. So whatever talent that you may have, all right, you can um, do that for the Lord. You can do that for somebody else. You can do it in the church. All right, if there's a you know position for it or room for it. All right, so serving, part of your serving, time, talents. All right, Jay, good with social media. All right, we need Jay Johnson to serve. All right, time, talents, treasures. All right, now serving. All right, two different components. Serving, it can be um, out of the goodness of your heart, where it doesn't require any financial means. 
All right. Uh, serving like passing out clothes, passing out food, partnering with a food shelter or whatever, and, and, and serving people, helping somebody move, being a service to them. Doesn't require anything but time and probably a little bit of muscles. And then there are some instances where it's going to require funding. All right. And y'all, here it is. I want y'all to hear my heart. This is why I asked the Lord that I want to be a, a multimillionaire. Because don't get me wrong, you can do a lot with little funding or no funding. But when you have funding and the resources to be a blessing to other people, oh, you, you're about to really tell Satan's kingdom now that, you know, like, I want to be a multi-millionaire. Oh, I want to build homes and for people who get in trouble and, you know, create housing, people um, who have been incarcerated, former felons. It's hard for them to get back on their feet. All right. So I want apartment complexes, three, four, five, six floors. All right. So guess what? It costs money. And, you know, we get all deep in church. Oh, he talking about money. Look, y'all, I got delivered from people a long time ago when it comes to money. But y'all, money's in the Bible. Money is probably the number one most topic in the Bible. Jesus talked about money all the way from Genesis to Revelation. All right. So, people of God, it's okay. Look, be a, I want to be a blessing financially, bless me with resources, so that I can be blessing somebody else. Like, look at my life. For example, the Lord has blessed me with real estate. Y'all think I'm just doing that to be cute and you know, have a, another stream of income. No, people need somewhere to stay and live. People need shelter. So, Lord, bless me with this so that you can use someone in the kingdom of God to be a blessing to somebody else. So, y'all see where I'm going tonight? All right? So, everything I do, everything we should do is, is it should be attached to servant. All right? Time, talents, treasures, energy. All right. Once again, work using your muscles. You know, it may require some physical strength. All right. It may require you to think. Like, for example, <laughs> we got a meeting tonight after Bible study. And guess what? I'm going to need your mental energy <laughs> to help us go to the next level in God, go to the next level in ministry. All right. To go out there and reach the loss. All right. So that's some form of energy. And sometimes even your life, just like Jesus and just like Miss Linda Barber. God bless you. All right. So that's why we serve, 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 serve. All right. So it's going to transform us. Okay. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? So serving transforms us. All right. Ministry. Got all that. Um, so here it is. The cross is a sign of surrender, but the towel is a sign of service. All right. So my question tonight or my statement tonight, show me the towel. All right. Now, we give the illustration, all right, of someone who is a waiter or waitress, all right? Y'all know they be having a towel. I wish I had a towel in here. <laughs> all right, around their little arm, you know, be carrying it, whatever, around they, this area right here. Y'all know what I'm talking about, all right? So for the rest of this week, I want to challenge you. Show me the towel. All right, when you walk on your job tomorrow, when you walk into the community tomorrow, when you begin to interact and engage with people, all right, they should see your towel. All right, now you can put on a natural towel if you want to, but in the spiritual realm, all right, I want you to take on the mentality of a servant. All right, how can I use this towel, all right, to serve somebody else? Maybe I need to uh, go pick up somebody who doesn't have transportation to take them to get their hair done, take them to the grocery store, take them to, to go shopping. All right. Go pick up a meal, pay for it, drop it by the house. Hey, you didn't have to do that. I just want to be a servant to you. Y'all see what I'm saying? All right, so this week, all right, I want everybody on here listening, watching, observing. All right, do something special for someone this week. Don't let them know. Look, just, just what they call your folks, just pop up on them. All right, just pop up on them. Now, don't get shot enough because some people got guns and stuff. I don't want y'all to get shot. All right, so if somebody got guns, you know, make sure. All right, but this week, all right, do something nice and generous, something kind, something that shows that you were thinking about them, and, and just be a servant. All right, and, and when they ask you, they go ask you, why did you have to look? I I, I sow seeds all the time. 
All right. And I just re- and I, I do it randomly when the Lord prompts it in my spirit. I do it randomly. All right. And most people ask, why you do this? I just say, I just want to be a blessing. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm a servant. I just want to be, I just want to be a servant. I just want to be a service to you. You can use this any way you want to. I don't care what you do with it. I just want to be a blessing to you. So this week, all right, show me that towel. Show me the towel. Read the praise. I'm, this is your challenge this week. I'm challenging you. All right, we got tonight, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You got three days, all right, to, to show somebody your towel. Let them know, all right, that Bible study is transforming your life. All right, then not only am I getting the teaching and the word and, 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 the, and the, the, the meat of the word, but I'm also going to apply it to my life for real. And I'm not just on here just to be on here, but I'm going to really take this scripture like Jesus as he began to wash the disciples' feet. I'm getting ready to wash somebody's feet, all right, whatever that is to you. What, what is your washing feet to somebody else? All right, something that signifies and exemplifies humility. All right, that is where we're trying to gravitate to on tonight. All right, so show me that uh, towel, all right? Let me see. Oh, Jesus. I keep going off the wrong screen. All right, I'm sorry y'all keep seeing all this business transaction, all right? Where is it at? Jesus. All right, here we go. Everyday Seminary. All right, so um, where are we at? Number two, my screen is freezing up. Oh, Jesus. Why is my <laughs> y'all pray for me? Y'all, I y'all know I'll be working all I'll be working hard all day. Where am I? All right, here we go. This is it. All right, and number two. Here it is. Serving inhibits us from making idols out of rows. Like I just said. All right. I gotta get on me too. I can't get so high up that I'm a senior pastor, I'm a CEO, that I lose my servant, my servanthood. So serving, once again, is for us for not to get so high, to not think so highly of ourselves. All right, because who would have been so many pastors and leaders and whoever, they made themselves idols. Everybody got a bow down to them. Everybody's a yes, sir, and being yes, man, and yes, women. Look, y'all, I can't stand that stuff. So what we do is we as a church, we get together and, and we serve together. So you see me serving, and I see you serving, and now we have the now we're on the same page now. Now we got chemistry. All right, now, now we on what, what the book of Acts, we are all on one accord. All right, <laughs> because when the, the head from the back of the church to the front of the church, when everybody's on the same page, then guess what? It begins to unify us. And that's part of the being the church about unity, being in unison. So I thank y'all for being on here tonight, all right? So it inhibits us from making idols out of roles, all right? Number three, diversifies the ways in which God can use us, all right? You'll begin to discover new ways. On God can use you in other forms and capacities that, all right, God, you're just not anointed in the uh, marketplace. You're just not anointed in the corporate world. You're just not anointed. You're just not a servant uh, on your job and in your career. But, but when you begin to serve, it'll begin to illuminate that God can use you in other places. He can use you through, uh, use you to be a blessing and a service to other people. So it diversifies. It, it begins to expand you who you are. All right, that you just want call, all right, to a certain sect. All right, but, but God has called you to, to do great exploits. He has called you to go out there and conquer the world and be a blessing to them. All right, and it also accelerates the development of the fruit of the spirit. Now, I, I really love this point, all right, because all right, I want to show you, all right, the scripture for that, all right? It, so this is uh, very good. Uh, just so let me show you that scripture. All right, once again, it accelerates the development of the fruit of the spirit. All right, so what is the fruit of the spirit? I'm glad that you asked, all right? Let's go look at the notes. All right, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, all right? 20, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. All right, and these against us, there is no law. All right, so once again, let's put it all together. All right, when we serve, all right, serving is an indication of love. 
All right, don't get me wrong. There are some people who do it with the wrong mentality. They're just trying to be seen with it. All right, but when you really have a, a, a servant's heart, uh, when you really operate with the spirit of humility and, and all that good stuff, all right, it will show that you love somebody. So this week, in these three days, as you begin to serve the community, your friend, your mama, your children, whomever God has put in your spirit as I'm preaching and teaching tonight, all right, you're going to be exemplifying love. All right, and part of that, it, it is it is accelerating you in the spiritual realm. It is developing you. Here it is. It is growing you up. Hence, we're in a series now on spiritual growth. All right, so as we begin to serve, a lot of you, how in the world does this tie into spiritual growth? All right, it's growing you up in the spirit. It's producing new fruit. Here it is. It's producing fresh fruit in your lives. All right, once again, when we serve, all right, it gives us the development of the fruit of the spirit. All right, so the fruit of the spirit, once again, we just talked about love. Not only is God going to give you that, uh, that, 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 that fruit of love, but also when you serve, guess what? You're going to have joy about it. That, that, that you're going to start to feel good about who you are. And as you begin to feel good about yourself, honey, baby, child of God, man of God, woman of God, all right, you're going to start loving back on God. So y'all see how it's going to reciprocate. Like, Lord, thank you for humbling me. And you're going to start appreciating God. God, I thank you because you have already set the model. You have already set the standard when you wash the disciples' feet. So as you begin to serve all right, in your local communities, in your assemblies, in your church, not only are you going to have a love about it, not only are you going to have joy and have a good spirit, high spirits about it, but you're also going to experience peace of it. And y'all, when you've been going through hell and high water all week, when you've been stressed out and maxed out and it's been taxing on your spirit, when you've been going through uh, the storm and the rain and going from trials and tribulations, this and that, carrying this burden, got this bill, Lord, how I'm going to do this, got this goal, but I'm not seeing the manifestation of it. When you serve, you're going to have a peace about your life. God is going to grant you peace, which surpasses all understanding. All right, so once again, it, it, it is going to develop the fruit, y'all. Y'all see how all this stuff is coming together? All right. It's love, joy, peace, long suffering. All right. That, and this is a this is one for me. This is preaching to me tonight. All right. You're gonna have to have long suffering. What's called uh you're gonna develop a patience, all right, to, to wait on people. Uh, to, to, to really sympathize and, and empathize with them in the midst of what they're going through. All right, that's the, and that's that's the same type of grace that Jesus has given us. All right, he gives us long suffering. That's why we worship him. That's why we praise him because, all right, he suffers long with us. And that's the same thing. As you begin to serve, all right, somebody that God is placing in your spirit right now, all right, he's going to allow you to suffer long. That's what long suffering is, to suffer long too. Here it is, to have endurance with them. All right, that, that, that someone may be on the verge of giving up, having a mental breakdown. All right, but because you serve them, they're going to feel like they continue to endure. That, yes, I'm going through this situation. Yes, I'm going through this uh, insurmountable circumstance in my life. But I'm going to show and communicate to them that I have long suffering. All right, long suffering, gentleness, all right, self explanatory, gonna be kind to them, gonna be nice, all right, you're gonna be developing this fruit, goodness, faith, all right, meekness and temperance. Those are very similar in nature, all right, and guess what? I need this as a senior leader, as a pastor, as a whatever, CEO, whatever you wanna call me. I need this. I need God to stir my faith up. All right, so Lord of God, to stir my faith up. All right, so so I want you to think about, once again, we had a foot washing service our first or second year of ministry. And y'all, it, it, it just humbled us to, to wash people's feet. And, uh, you know, and, and when you began to wash people's feet, and we're going to have to do it again soon. All right, it, it did something to my faith. All right, that, that people who were in a hopeless situation, when we began to wash their feet, it just seemed like they had hope again. It seems like they began to revive again. And y'all, people, God, I tell you, it did something to my faith. And when we began to serve, God will begin to produce in that fruit in your life that, that if you've been lacking faith in any arena of your life, God, when you serve, God is going to give you the faith that you need. So once again, not only is the servant the serving for them, for the people, 
But once again, God is also doing something inside of us. All right. So it's a twofold blessing. It's a twofold, all right, um, thing that's occurred in our life. All right. That not only that we're, we're do, being a blessing to them, but simultaneously, God is doing something inside of us. Meekness, gentleness, all right, temperance. All right. So that's what God is doing. Now, last thing I want to share with you. All right. I want to give you this case study. All right. On first Kings 17, nine and five. And this is one of my favorite uh, passages of scripture uh, to share from. And then we go pray and get on out of here. Uh, I'm trying to see where everybody is. Uh, see you look in the comment real quick. Anybody got any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to unmute your phone. All right. Let me look in the chat. All right. Uh, you right. Sacrifice your own feelings. All right. I like that. Nieves. Yes. Sacrifice your own feelings. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> now let's look at first Kings 17, nine to 15 case study. All right. going to look at this and um, look at this woman. OK. Mm -hmm. Arise. This is um, Elijah. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God live it, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in the barrel, and a little oil in the cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go and Dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make one for thee and of thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day of the Lord send it rain upon the earth. Y'all, look, there's just so much in this. Let's go and knock this out. All right. So we have this woman of God. Number one, the woman is a widow. All right. So she's already lost her husband in the text. All right. So the prophet of God, Elijah, he comes to the gate. All right. After not having rain. All right. Ravens sustaining him and all that good stuff. She's already gathering sticks and he calls her. Watch this. He interrupts her service. Well, he interrupts her. Watch this. She was on her way to go get some sticks, y'all. So sometimes serving will inconvenience you. Y'all see how this tied into our, our, our sermon series? All right, times of inconvenience. It flowing right in. All right? So he interrupts us. It's an inconvenience for her. And the man of God, he asks her, hey, I pray the a little water in the vessel that I may drink. All right? So the man of God is thirsty. As she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, bring me, I pray thee a morsel of bread. Bro, hold up now. You had already asked for this water. <laughs> now you asked for some bread. I, man, you, you trying to rob me, ain't you? Here it is. Here it is. And she said, as the Lord thy God live it. Here it is. So watch this. All right, what we see in the text, verse 12, selflessness. All right? Because she put herself out the way. She put her feelings. Thank you, Nieves. She put her feelings out the way. She put her flesh out the way. And guess what she said? It's not about me in this moment. It's about serving the man of God. Here it is. And she said, as the Lord thy God lives, I have not a cake, but y'all, just a handful of meal in a barrel. And guess what? Just a little bit, my last, in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. So she is down to her very last. She's at the bottom of the barrel. I preach from this. Uh, when we first got back to the, uh, we started uh, having service at Greater Community. So we also see in verse 12, sacrifice. All right, that she is sacrificed. What I told y'all, you look at your notes, that sometimes you, when it comes to serving, you may even have to sacrifice your own life, really pertaining to our parents. All right, that some of y'all, all right, y'all some good parents that when you didn't have enough money for yourself to pay the bills and your child calls you, mama, I need to go on this field trip. Mama, I'm hungry. Mama, I got to do this. I got to do that. And guess what? You made a sacrifice for your children. All right? And you really put your life on the line because the truth of the matter is you could have got evicted. All right? They could have cut your lights off. Some of y'all probably had your lights off. All right? But it's called sacrifice. Watch this. So she's now to her last. 
All right, I'm dressing it up for me and my son. They may eat it and die. All right, and Elijah said to her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me there of a little cake first. So before you feed you and your son, I need you to make me a cake first and bring it to me at the all, and I will make it for me and my son. For this said the Lord of God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the kuzo or fail until the day of the Lord. Y'all, can I just stop and preach real quick? Look, the old folks used to say, serving the Lord, will pay off after a while. All right, so when we look at this woman in the text in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, all right, all because she decided to serve the man of God, all right, she didn't have to worry about another thing in her life, which tells us tonight, all right, when you serve, all right, when you begin to sacrifice, all right, when you get your feelings out the way, all right, when you get your time out the way, God will take care of you. Is that plain and simple? All right, I know it's very basic. All right, but once again, when you make the sacrifice for good purposes, having the right intentions behind it, all right, when you serve, God will take care of you. So as long as you are being a servant, have a servant's heart and a servant's attitude, having a servant's disposition and and and, and showing people your towel, you never have to worry about God providing for you. You never have to worry about God making a way for you and your children and your whole household. All right, because because she served. All right, look, the word of the Lord declares, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And I'm done tonight. All right, <laughs> so y'all, I want to just encourage y'all to continue to serve the Lord, continue to have a heart of a servanthood. And once again, all week long, show me your towel. All right, show somebody your towel this week. All right, whatever you got to do, if you got to be interrupted, if you have to break your regular routine, show somebody your towel this week and be a service. All right, once again, it's, it's a discipline all right, that, that we have to be able to train our minds. All right, we have to be able to transform our minds to think as a servant so every time you walk into your job wherever you work show the people your towel every time you hang around somebody the church when we get together this Sunday for our, our, our uh, fish fry when, when, when if you inside the church building wherever you are hanging around kids the elderly Show the people your towel. Let them know you proud to wear your towel. That, that I, ain't, I ain't doing this to be seen. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. I want you to be blessed. Because I understand that when I possess a servant's heart, servant's mentality, God's going to bless me on the back end. I may have to sacrifice. I may have to go without. I may have to have, watch this, a temporary inconvenience. But I now understand that that that. The widow woman, all right, in the text in 1 Kings 17, she gave us another example, y'all, that when you serve, all right, it may hurt, it may hurt you a little bit, but in the end, God will sustain you, God will keep you, he will keep a roof over your head, he will keep money in your pocket, God will provide, he will continue to be Jehovah Jireh if we all continue to possess a servant's heart. Praise the Lord. Can somebody put your hands together for Bible study? Amen. God bless you. All right. We want to thank everybody for being here uh, tonight, the Bible study. Look, y'all made this sacrifice. I appreciate you all wholeheartedly for sticking with us. Anybody got any prayer requests? I believe uh, Miss April said I was, uh, when you pray at the end of Bible study, pray for my friend and her mother-in-law that they are going through some health issues. All right. We're going to continue to pray for them. Anyone else with praise reports or prayer requests, you can unmute your phone or put your video on. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, it's a blessing to see y'all tonight. Um, and we're getting ready to Miss Nieves praying for patience and faith. Amen. I guess we hit that fruit of the spirit then for you tonight. 
Amen. Anybody else? Any prayer requests, prayer reports? So we're going to pray real quickly. Uh, we, not quickly, <laughs> but y'all know. And we're going to end the live broadcast on Facebook, and we're going to go straight to uh, our meeting. So don't exit or anything out. All right? Dear in the Father God, we tell you thank you. We thank God for your grace and your mercy. We thank God for your love and your kindness. God, we just pray tonight, Lord, that uh, you give us a servant's heart. God, allow us, God, to put on the towel, God, and uh, show people, Lord, that we are in it, God, because we are Christians and uh, we have faith in you, God, Lord, that uh, you're going to start turning things around for others, Lord. You're going to start transforming people. And Lord, as you begin to work on them, Lord, you're also working on us. So, God, we thank you, God, for performing surgery uh, in our lives, in our spirits, in our minds tonight. God, we pray, Lord, that uh, this word falls on good ground. God, we thank you, God, for April's petition tonight. Lord, we pray and lift up that family, God, right now. We lift up uh, April's friend and her mother-in-law, Lord. We speak healing, God, right now. So, God, we stand in agreement. God, we stand on one accord. And we decree and declare, Lord, your word, Lord, Lord, that by your stripes, we are already healed. So, God, we receive healing in the name of Jesus, God. God, for a friend and for that that mother-in-law, God, who are going through and having those health challenges. God, we understand, Lord, that there's nothing too hard for you. Lord, you are the God who healeth thee. And God, we thank you, God, for healing. God, by faith, we receive healing in the name of Jesus. So, God, we understand you, God, to be everywhere at the same time. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you visit them right now. And God, begin to form a habitation in their lives and in their bodies. God, begin to, God, to regulate any blood issues. God, begin to regulate any mind issues, whatever the health issue is. Lord, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you begin, God, to heal from the inside out. God, we decree and declare victory, God, in your bodies, God. God, we thank God for the praise report and the testimony that shall come forth, Lord, on how you healed them. God, we lift up God in the heavens tonight, Lord, you begin, God, to allow her, God, to exemplify patience. God, God, continue, God, to increase and strengthen her faith. God, Lord, for you have called her, God, for the assignment of her life. God, even at an early age, Lord, that you're using her. Lord, you're training her. Lord, you're developing her in the name of Jesus. Lord, as she even begins, God, God, to do hair, God, on her friends and those who come into her care in her vicinity. Lord, we pray, Lord, you begin to use her. God, encourage her heart even the more. Strengthen her faith even the more. God, we thank you, God, for her destiny. We thank God for her life. God, we thank God for a bright future, Lord. God, we just pray, Lord, that everything, Lord, that she's prayed about, Lord, that you bring it to pass. Lord, we pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that you even begin to expedite some things in her life. Lord, I thank you, Lord, she, she, she don't have to wait until she's 30 and 40, God, to experience your goodness. But God, we decree and declare, Lord, that you're going to do something special in her life. God, we pray, Lord, for her anointing, Lord, that you, God, begin to stir her up. God, begin to, God, to let her light shine. God, we tell you, thank God for each and every member on tonight. Lord, we pray, uh, Lord, that you begin, God, to cover our homes. God, cover our, our children and our grandchildren. Lord, continue, God, God, to allow us, God, to be the beacon of light, God, in this city, in this community. And God, we give you praise for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Look, y'all, I'm about to end this broadcast. I hope that we can still stay on. I'm going to try it. Yeah, if it hangs up, y'all just log right back in. <laughs>